It has one 12 volt battery on the front of the trailer. There's two lines that's not hooked up, but they are for the solar panels that's not on top. It is solar prepped here in the front, but if you buy the solar panel that preps into it, you'll have to hook the other two wires up. There is two 20 pound cylinders on the unit. Arrow on the regulator is pointed towards that one over there. As soon as we would happen to open that up, it's gonna turn clear in the glass eye, indicating that the one it's turned to is the one it's working off of. As soon as that tank would happen to come empty, it's gonna turn red inside that glass eye. Then all you have to do is flip the lever over to this side here, work off of this one while you take that one off and take it to town and have it refilled. There is two tabs on the bottom of the gas bottle cover for a bungee cord to go underneath the metal rack to hold the cover in place. But it also has a quick release on the top so that you don't have to take the cover off every time to get to the propane cylinder's valves. On the electric jack on the front, it does have a light for hooking up at nighttime. It has your up and down arrow for raising and lowering the jack. It does have a fusible link off on the right hand side. And there is a manual handle in the front compartment that will go down through the top and will manually crank the jack up or down for any reason it doesn't go on its own. But if, before I took that manual handle out, I would check this fuse to make sure that fuse was good. The fuse is designed for in case the jack goes up too far it pops the fuse or if the jack goes down too far it pops the fuse. Keeps it from tearing the gears up on top of the motor. As we start down this side here, it has the four BL jacks on all four corners. That are for stabilizing the trailer, not for leveling, but for stabilizing the trailer only. Freshwater drain cap is underneath right here. Draining the water that's in the freshwater tank out. I put the cap in the front compartment. In that front compartment, if you look off on the right hand side, is where your water pump's at. And you'll have to get into that for your winterizing and dewinterizing of your trailer. Freshwater tank fills here and drains where the liquid's coming out from underneath the trailer that that white cap in that front compartment goes on. Or you can hook the water hose and regulator to the city water connect and work right off the water pressure going to the hose. It's always good to put a pressure regulator onto the trailer anytime you hook a water hose up to it. It just cuts your water pressure down between 41 and 45 pounds of pressure. As we step back by through here, your first is your outside hot water heater. Hot water heater works two ways, 110 and propane. The 110 switch is in the lower left hand corner on the outside. Your gas switch is going to be on your monitor panel on the inside of the trailer. Before you turn on either source of heat, you want to pop the pop-off valve and make sure that you have water coming out of the top of it before you turn on electric or gas, either one. Also has a drain plug down in the bottom and an inch and a sixteenth socket takes it in and out, but it is also an anode rod. What an anode rod does is it draws all the impurities out of the water to that rod, eats that rod up instead of eating up the inside of the tank. Anytime the steel rod in the center is showing, it's time to replace it. But that is where you'll drain the hot water heater for winterizing, dewinterizing, and in between trips. Power cord comes out, hooks to the building, it's 25 to 30 foot long. It is a 30 amp service on the end. Lug nuts on the trailer have been torqued at 100 foot pounds, is what's recommended on the side of the trailer. And the tires are aired up to pressure, which is 65 pounds on the side of the tire, cold. Next one back is the outside of the furnace. Sucks cold air in the top, hotter out the bottom, and I always suggest putting a mud dauber screen over the outside of the furnace. For the simple fact, once it's been lit on propane, mud daubers love that smell. They go in there, they build their little dirt heads on the inside, and then your airflow is not right on the inside of the burn chamber. So that little $20 investment's worth its weight in gold because it's $145 an hour for every hour that we take the hot water or furnace out and clean the mud daubers out of it. We're going to go back up to the stove vent up here at the top. For the stove vent to work properly, the two tabs have to be lifted up, allows the flapper to flap. But when you get ready to travel, you'll want to push them flappers back down. That way it don't flap while you're traveling and break out and come out and pull out on you. Black tank flush. Black tank flush is used when you're dumping your holding tanks. Once you have your holding tanks completely empty, you can hook a water hose and regulator to that, turn water pressure onto it, 
It's got a little aerator on the inside of the black tank that spins around. Helps clean more of the debris out of the inside of the black tank only. Then you got your outside shower. You got hot and cold running water back here. It's good for cleaning animals, cleaning fish, or cooling the wife off when she's mad. Sir hose hooks on just like the sir cap does. Three inch valve in the front is your black tank water. The two inch gray valve in the back will be your kitchen sink, bathroom sink, and shower water. While we're down here looking at that, it also has two low water drain points right beside the jack. The red side of the water system is the hot side. The blue is the cold side of the water system. You'll use those for winterizing and dewinterizing in the trailer and in between long trips to drain the water out of the water lines. It does have a park cable hook up here in the back so that if you're at a park that has cable, you can hook your, their cable to that connection and have the same cable that the park has on your TV on the inside. It does have a spare tire on the back of it that it hasn't been torqued on, it's been put on with a wrench, but it is air to the pressure which is 65 pounds on the side of the tire cold. It's not. It's not. I don't know what that plate is, but it's not a backup camera. Pretty good sized compartment underneath the bunk room. And it does have an outside gas line here in the back. So that if you have an outside grill or propane hookup that you can hook into that. It has a little T-handle on the side that has to be in line with the gas line coming out for it to work off the two gas bottles on the front of the trailer. There is another place for a TV here on the outside. A 110 outlet to plug it into. And either the park cable or the antenna on top of the trailer for your coax cable for the TV. Does have two outside speakers. I'll have to show you more about that on the stereo on the inside. We're going to come up to the front compartment up here. This is where your handles are. The little handle is for the tongue jack on the front of the trailer. The brass colored handle is for your balance jacks on all four corners. Does have a light in the front compartment that has a push button in the center of it to turn it on and off. Pretty good size compartment. Now we're going to go back to the front door and adjust the steps. On the front door, you'll want to have it fully open. Your steps are going to be mounted up inside the door frame by the yellow handle. You'll pull the yellow handle to the side, allows the steps to come out at you. There is a pin on each one of the legs. There's 18 holes in the bottom of each one of the legs for the adjustment of the steps. The main thing is the steps have to come out and they have to lay flat in the threshold. To get the, to where they lay flat in the threshold, you'll pull the two pins out on either side and adjust the legs accordingly. The main thing is it has to lay flat there for the proper fit of the door over the top of it. Now we're gonna to go to the inside of the trailer. It does have a working fire station just inside on the left-hand side of the door. You'd also have your carbon monoxide LP detector that gives you an allowing, an annoying beep for any time it smells LP or carbon monoxide. We're going to come back up to the monitor panel up on top. We're going to check the battery life on it. It shows you the battery is fully charged. That's not really accurate. Anytime you're plugged into the 110 line, it's going to show you that. To get an accurate reading of the battery, have the 110 line unplugged and then push your battery button. Freshwater tank. It shows you that it's still... Start, it's almost empty on there now. Uh, it went to two thirds and now it's almost to the empty mark. Black tank shows you that it's empty and your gray tank shows you that it's empty. As they fill up they show one third, two thirds full. On your hot water heater on the outside it has a gas button that when you turn it on the little red light at the top comes on. The little red light at the top will stay on for about a minute. Then the little red light goes off, then the hot water heater will go through two lighting processes to light on gas. For any reason it does not light, that little red light at the top will come back on. The second one is the gas side or electric side of the hot water heater. The second switch on it, you have to have the one on the outside on and the one on the inside on for it to be on electric. Third red button is the water pump switch that turns the water pump on between the fresh water tank 
and the faucets. And that's one of the new appliances that's in the trailer. It got a new water pump when I serviced it. Entry, interior lights, and your awning lights. There is no slide rooms on the trailer. So we're going to run, extend your awning out. We can't get the awning all the way out because of the trailer up along the side of it, but I'm going to take it out as far as I can and show you the pinch points on each one of the arms, front and back. Your awning lights are up underneath the awning against the trailer. You do have the two blue lights in each one of the speakers when the awning lights are on. And each one of the arms has a pinch point. What I consider a pinch point is I can pull down against this and it puts the pitch of the rain coming off this corner of the awning. The front arm has the same thing on it and it will put the pitch of the rain going towards the front. But when you get ready to roll it back up, you're going to want to push it straight in line with itself so that when it comes back in, it lays in the cradle on the side of the trailer. Now we'll go back to the inside again. All the rest of the lights in the trailer have to be turned on by hand. The one above the table has to be turned on by hand. The one in the ceiling has to be turned on by hand. All the rest of the lights in the trailer have to be turned on by hand. Now your tabletop comes off the two pedestals underneath, goes between the two benches. Your two back cushions comes over the top of the benches to make a smaller bed there. You have an AM, FM, stereo, CD, and DVD player. There is a remote for it in the cabinet up the top. It does have a TV with a power booster on the back wall. For the power booster to be working, the green light has to be on. Let me sneak by and I'll get them remotes. We're going to turn the TV on. with the antenna on top of the trailer and the remote and power booster. That TV channel's 80 miles away from here. That's working off the antenna on top of the trailer and the power booster in behind the TV. But that's not too bad a picture for a TV station that's 80 miles away. Then the TV will just fold back out of its way. There is a little remote for the stereo at the top. It has an on and off button on it and an A and B speakers. A is going to be your inside speakers, B is going to be your outside speakers. But it will also play a DVD or a CD through the stereo. DVD in the stereo, you have to change your input setting on the TV to AV1. Then you can do the speakers inside and out. Each one of the bunks has a light above it and a USB port. The top window on the bunk back here is big enough that in case something would happen somebody can climb out that window there. On the bottom bunk it does have a light on the wall on it and a USB port. I was thinking they were storage. That's that back compartment. A light in the bathroom. We're going to go into the, the bathroom area itself. Light switch on the wall turns the light on above us. Mirror knob in the ceiling turns the vent. It cranks the vent up. Little black button turns the fan on. Your shower's got just like you would have at home. Got hot and cold running water. Hot water on the left side, cold water on the right. And you have a single foot flush on the toilet on the right hand side. Directions on the lid how to use it. Fill it halfway full. Do your business, fill and dump. It also has a heat register in the bathroom that lets heat come into the bathroom and an air conditioner vent right by the door as it comes into the bathroom. You also have your GFI outlet by the bathroom sink that protects all eight of the 110 outlets in the trailer. Thermostat up on the wall pretty spelt self-explanatory it's on the air conditioner side all the way to the left you have a fan side and off and a heat you always run or run your air in the auto position and on high 
You'll dial your temperature down for your AC. You'll put it on heat. You'll dial your temperature up for the heat factor of it. Also has a two drawer medicine cabinet. Here again, you got the hot water on the left side, the cold water on the right side. We're going to come back to the ice box. We're going to open it up. It does have a travel lock for traveling down the road. We're going to open it up. There's going to be two settings on it too. <coughs> you have a thermostat for the freezer up in top that says cold or colder. If you put it on colder, all the cold air stays up in the freezer till it gets to where it will freeze in the top. When you get ready to use it, you'll want to turn it either middle ways or back down to where it says cold. And then you also have your push buttons in the refrigerator part for your refrigerator temperature. And it goes from one to five, but it also has the on and off button on it. We're gonna slide right on past that. Up here on the microwave, the only thing I can tell you about the microwave is I know how to set the clock and I did warm my coffee up in it. You hit the clock button there, let's say it's 1030. Hit the clock button again to the two center eyes is flashing. The only reason I set the time on the microwave is I can tell if the trailer's lost 110 power coming to it if it doesn't have the proper time. There is a light for the stove top and the fan. For this fan to work properly, the two tabs have to be lifted on the outside vent to allow the smoke to come from the inside of the trailer to the out. Button on the right hand side of the stove, when you turn it up, illuminates the knobs on the stove itself. The glass stove top gets moved up two times up out of the way. Then we'll use the igniter on the left hand side to light the burners up on top. And it will also light the oven down below. <coughs> so you'll turn it to where it says pilot on up here at the knob, hold down on the knob and use the same striker for lighting the oven as you do the top. When you're striking it, you'll be able to see a little blue flame right about there on the metal in the back. That is your striker lighting the pilot light on the oven. You'll let that burn for about a minute <coughs> and then you'll dial your temperature up for it. If you push the button on the right hand side down, you also have the illumination on your knobs and a light inside the oven. <coughs> Before you lay the glass stove top down, you want to touch the top griddle to make sure it's cold to the touch of the hand before you lay the tempered glass back down over the top of it. <coughs> Light above the sink has to be turned on by hand. You do have a 110 outlet beside the sink. In the bottom of this cabinet here, there is the two white valves on the back of the hot water heater. Both white valves are pointed towards the tank right now. When you get ready to winterize, they'll turn sideways, which actually makes a loop at the back of the hot water heater <coughs> so that you don't have to fill the hot water heater with antifreeze. Top cabinet up here at the top, there is two sets of keys for the trailer. The purple key does the lock and deadbolt on the front door. The 751 key does all your outside compartments and your outside shower. All the rest of the paperwork that's found in the trailer is in the blue bag here. They kept records of everything that they'd done to the trailer the whole time that they had it, and it is all in that blue bag. <coughs> Another USB port beside the couch. Light above the couch has to be turned on by hand, and it does have a console with two cup holders in between on the couch. Or the couch will actually fold out into a bed too. And it does have storage up underneath it. It does have pretty good size storage cabinets above that too. In the bedroom area in here, all the lights in the bedroom have to be turned on by hand. A little push button in the center of the lights. Does have another vent in the bedroom with a neural knob to crank the vent up, but does not have a fan. You also have a 110 outlet on either side of the bed at the headboard. There is another place on the wall for a TV in the bedroom area with a 110 outlet to plug it into, a park cable or antenna hookup in the ceiling. 
Brown venting the floor to bring heat in. Brown venting the ceiling for the AC. Also has a fire escape window in the master bedroom area. There is storage up underneath the bed. There is a closet on either side of the bed and a cubby hole at the top. <coughs> also has a privacy door to make privacy between the bedroom and the living room area. It is a pocket door. And that's basically everything on the trailer. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them the best that I can. Thank you for your time.